Okay, here we go. Good luck, everyone. And uh, welcome to Shabbos. Pashas Nisa. A lot of different minyanim. Tonight, uh, we will, you know, get to Sikor Baal Shem Tov. Let's just take a quick look at where it is we're holding the scenes around. And, uh, All right. So, we spoke about in Reb Nachman and Benkin. Um, he, Reb Nachman and Benkin, who is Rabbeinu's grandfather, we spoke about how he came to marry um, the his wife was the mother of Rabbi Simcha, who was Rabina's father. She was the sister of Rabbi Sakhantovich. We talk about the whole Mesa of, uh, I believe it was second marriage. And uh, they made a shidduch, and he, after the chuppah, he disappeared. And the Baal Shem did what he did. He found out where he was, and he called him. He said, what happened? So he said that he saw that, you know, that Mashiach will come out of, you know, their marriage. But when she'll give a birth to a boy, she you know, she will have to pass away. And the other Rahmana seems she's a young woman. So um, his wife said, if my husband is such a big tzaddik that he knows in advance, she says she's willing, she accepts it. And uh, before her son was married, she asked the Kaddish Baruch just to give her 30 days to spend with her son. And she got it. And Lachlan Denker was very bitter about this. He said it was such an esrotza in the Shemayim because of her serious nephew. If she would have asked for the decree to be annulled completely, it would have. She didn't do it. Anyhow. So Lachlan Denker, he was a very, very important figure in the first generation of the Hasidus. He was, actually, he, he was a chassid, you know, in the old meaning of the word before the chassidus even existed. He became one of the important Talmidim of the Baal Shem Tov, and, and to the point that Baal Shem Tov called him Neman Beisoy. He is the faithful of the Baal Shem Tov's house. He would um, go in various uh, um, missions on behalf of the Baal Center to the Tzadikim Stone of generation. As we said, after his first wife passed away, he married with a little Jewish uh, wife. And they said the Shidduch was actually done in the, in the advice of the uh, about Shemta. And the the uh, the agreement, that agreement between the Baal Shemta and, and the Nachman Adenke was that the son of Rabbi Nachman Adenke will marry the daughter of the Baal Shemta's daughter, Oral. So when they will be born. And this is how Rabbi Benke, you know, the son, Simcha, married Fege, the daughter of Oru, and she was the mother of Rabbi Nachman of Bresel, who was named after his grandfather. And 
as we said, that his second wife passed away a month after she gave birth, as we said. It was a very famous um, person in the, uh, the, the Russian Jewry of the time. It was tremendous Tzitkis. And he, when he went to Asisra, which we'll talk about a bit later today, it made a big ration. And he had a tremendous mysterious um, to um, ransom uh, captives, Jewish captives, from their captors. At that particular time, you know, that was a time of um, the feudal wards of the time would uh, either take the Jews that owe them money, because usually the Jews were the innkeepers. If they had problem paying them the rent, they would take the person, the entire family, and put them in a dungeon. So he was, he was very, very, uh, he was very famous for um, being busy with Pidim Shvuim. That was his, it was his thing. And there are many stories and many miracles that he did. So anyhow, Rahav Odenke wanted to go to Eretz Yisrael. Uh, and he asked the Shus from the Baal Shem Tov. So the Baal Shem Tov told him, go to the Mikra first. When he came back, the Baal Shem Tov asked him, what did you see? And he told him. So Rahav Odenke said, the first dunk, uh, he saw Eretz Yisrael. And the second, the second Tvilo, he saw Yerushalayim. The third time he traveled, he saw rabbis. And the fourth time he traveled, he saw Kodesh HaKodesh. But he could not see Doran Kodesh. So Mashanto said, how do you want, how do you expect to see Doran Kodesh if it is measurable? So he understood, you know, he, and he believed. You know. Balshanta obviously was talking about himself. And it's, it said that after Balshanta, the Kodesh uh, was installed. So um, the, it says that, that Nachman Odenker, you know, went to his grave. And he would come back again and again and again. One time he came back, and he was dancing from joy. And he said he's going to Israel because finally Bashant of Gen Yeshus could go to Israel. One story. The second story is after the Stalkos of the Baal Shem HaKadosh, he had a very, very great Talmud. It was Yechil Mechel from Vlachov. Uh, Mechel, he, 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 he was uh, a very famous composer. He made a, you know, various nigunim. Uh, the said that Baal Shem Tov passed away. He asked Tiltami to, to sing this nigun, Yisrael Rachelin Rabim. And he said that, I don't know this nigun, but Baal Shem Tov said that anybody will sing this nigun all time with 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 feeling and with Isaiah's with Shuva, uh, he will join that particular singing and Bizat Hashem will awaken uh, great Rachman on that particular person. So we said that Rebchil Mechaz Lachalim was a talent of Baal Shem Tov, was inconsolable after the Baal Shem Tov was mistaken, until the Baal Shem Tov came to him in a dream, and he told him not to be so tzibrochen from his status, because it has to be that way. He says, until the Bithil Sanesim, and he told him, you don't know how many uh, adventures and trouble you caused me in the upper world until I was able to come down to this to this world to let you know not to be so inconsolable 
and the fact that I was a Mustali. I said, if you would have known that, you would not, you would have not, you would not do this and bother me so much. And the Bashan told him that in his Alula, you know, his Shavuos, uh, like in every tzaddik, the Shemun tzaddik has to come down to his fin. So all the Shoshanaim are open um, to find, you know, to hear the, the crying of all the people who are begging on his holy tzim, for the, to be from a shliach mitzvah, to be poiled for them, whatever it is, whatever it is that, that they want. So uh, as they say, you know, as we said before, that they said Bisham Malsemtot, he was spoiled with his 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 uh, place of burial will be Eretz Yisrael Mamish. Rabbeinu later explains that the place where the tzaddik is burned is, is buried is is Kadosh, is sanctified in the sanctity of Eretz Yisrael. Um, so. It says that Baruch Pinchas of Skolia, who was one of the grandchildren of Baal Shemtov, who said it was, it's very, very good to go to Kibbet Tzadikim, to daven there, because the place, you know, is greater than the Tefillah, or Kalap, and Rachamim, and Rotsim, before Kodesh Baruch Especially the schools of the Tzadik, that it's my own Rachamim, before Hashem, and requests for all those who come to the Tzadik to, to pray. The tzaddikim have great nachas when, you know, when people come to daven by the gravesites, especially to light candles, the chodesh, the baroness, to give tzedakah for the shalom of baroness is a very, very big thing. And smula, gedolo, that's lacha. It's also, while we're at it, it's good to remind the Rabbeinu said two things that we should keep in mind. The first is that a person should give constantly money for pigeon to ransom himself. So I know we do, we have already, you know, the stilla, pigeoness to give to somebody to make a pigeon for you and, and everything. Um, and Rabbi Simcha Balev said that any 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 tzedakah that you give, you can say our pidyon. It's fine. It's uh, already works. And another thing that Rabbeinu, that Rabbeinu said is, uh, which is very important to keep in mind, that is that a person has a bank of schools merits. And Rabbeinu said it is very, very good to make deposits into this bank before you actually need them. So it could be Tehillim, it could be some fasting, it could be any anything that you do in order to contribute to your bank of space, because once a person needs the schosen, you know, then you can have to go and run and ask people to dump for you, whatever it is. So, uh, it's better, I don't say it's better, you should, you know, deposit in your bank account. You know, it's like a, any, any experts in investments will tell you that the, the, the way to, to invest, anybody want to get into investing, you have to look at investment as something not that you do once every this, but like every month or whatever it is, put a certain amount of money and invest it. Whatever it is that your portfolio is, you know, and and but do it on a regular basis. The same thing. This is investment, and obviously this is the important investment. The person should invest at at all times in the bank and his in his account of his merits. Okay. Atkan is the Sukura Baal Shemtov. 
is a great thing uh, to say on uh, Shabbos. And now, Bezat Hashem, let's take a look at Sikha Saran, the Sikha for this particular week. And here we go. We are talking today on Sikha Ayn Dalad. Um, this is a very Lemaisadik Sikha. This is a, it's a Sikha that, that a person needs to use Lemaisa, needs to know how to do it because you know it is very easy to it's not easy and it's also very important you know to give kind of superficial uh to people I would want to give the people something to hang on to. They have a cash of the term. But Rabbeinu, uh, the series of the terrorists are coming out of the assumption that you're a serious man. In other words, that you're interested in actually in Avodah Hashem. It's not just even though it's just, I and mean, it's a great thing, but it's not just that, you know, you are Shem Shabbos And every now and then, you know, you want to hear a little Chassid Shavot, you know, something, uh, I remember I, I, I asked, I mean, years ago, many years ago, uh, in America, I said, oh, I asked you know, like, if you learn Kedusha Slavi, on a visa of Bendicho. So he said, well, learn to slave you. you know, look into Christian slave. Okay, learn this thing. Now, so the whole thing looks like, you know, it's like a, something that you, you know, you open up, you look into it. It's not, it's not a mice of you. Even learning, as we're talking about learning things about this. What's a, who am I to learn this? Person? It's like a, you know, this kind of false modesty that, uh, the reason says they said that Reno said that the reason why people are far from Avodah Hashem is because they have no uh, Yeshua Das. Yeshua Das means that you stop everything. Can you take a look? And you're saying like. What is this world about? Where is this going to? What is the Iker and what is the Tuffle? And Abedo said that's why it's very important for a person to have his way to lose. And he said that, that, that a person needs a certain time every single day to regret everything that needs, you know, that you need to regret. Do tshuva, you know, be sorry, I did this, I did that, I said this, I said that, I thought this, I thought that. So the, the thing that typifies the sikhs of Ravina for this is that very practical for people who are into serving for the Baha. Being that your prior, you, when you have Yeshua Das, it means your priorities are right. When your priorities are right, and you get into Avodah Hashem, the specific uh, problems, uh, strategic problems, tactical problems uh, that that typify somebody who is who is uh, who is. Um, Dealing with the Hashem. So the Sikhs of Rabbeinu are concentrating on how to actually fight the fight. This is, you know, the the the, the I don't know the, the various books about the art of war. There's the Chinese one, uh, and there's the Japanese one, the Five Rings. 
There's, of course, uh, Clausewitz, the German, 19th century, the father of all modern war, whatever it is with his principles. So here we have the, 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 the book of war. The person who is interested in the way Hashem has to go through. So here Rabbeinu puts down a very common scenario. This is a battle problem. You know, like American was doing before the Second World War. Orange was Japan and blue was America. And then, you know, they would do war games, whatever it is. This is not war games. This is a, a very, very um, Tachas with the uh, Indian. And he says, the Indian at Tfila. Here we're talking about the Indian of davening. Sometimes a person has endless shumis lavas with Tfila. A person is really not excited. He doesn't feel like davening. Let's put, let's, let's call a spade a spade. You, know, you don't feel like davening. So Rabbeinu says, what do you do? You have to manufacture for yourself, you know, excitement of the heart, the, the warming up of the heart, and the burning heart of the tefillah. How do you do this? Rabbeinu says, this is like the muscle when sometimes a person makes himself angry until he actually becomes angry. You know, a person wants to be angry and he like, you know, he heats himself up, you know, until he becomes really, really angry. You know, it's like when we were kids also, we made ourselves laugh. You know, how do you make yourself laugh? So you go to, you know, what the fish like. <laughs> Before you know it, you're laughing your head off. Right? So it's, it's, it, you, in other words, you, you wake it up in yourself. You, you fake it till you make it. That's the principle. The same thing is in Kedusha, in of Tfilov, that you have to do yourself, you know, you have to wake up anger. You have to manufacture anger in yourself. You have to manufacture valmkite in your heart, that your heart will burn in the burat field. And once you do this, you're faking it. It's not real, but you're faking it. You will come really to Islam as a chamin salev and feel until your heart is going to burn to his ground. And you're going to daven with tremendous islahavas. The same thing with simcha. The Indian simcha, especially at the time of tefillah, that feel has to be with great simcha, you know. So you have to force yourself to make yourself happy in everything that you can, you know, to make yourself happy. Especially time of tefillah, you know, find yourself in the kudah table. What are you? And he says, I am shown. And if sometimes your mind is totally blunted, you're totally confused. And there's no way that you can make yourself happy. The eight is, I mean, it says, make yourself as if you're happy. Fake it. You know, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like a, you know, are you feeling it? You make yourself as if you're happy. Through this, you will be there afterwards to real happiness. And he says, this is a great eight. It's a great advice to all the Vanshev and Dusha. First you, first, you make yourself as if you actually are really hot on the trail of doing that thing to be Dushan. And afterwards, you're there to do it with Bianas. The Havin Oid, Rabbeinu says, you should understand it profoundly, profoundly. You know, when Bo Hashem, we're close to Rabbeinu, Bo Hashem 
הוא לא הנציף על רבינו, לא חשב מספיק בדיבור על רבינו. And we have tremendous opposition that holds us back. Let's turn on this phone here. We have tremendous opposition holding us back because so much depends on the various of freedom. And I don't know about you, but I know myself that I can get myself to do various things in a very session. Not much, but here and there I can do something. But the thing that like almost totally and always eludes me is coming to Davin. I mean, I go to Davin, okay, you know, but it's like, once you're being told the, uh, the people, he said that you should dive in with all your might. And he joked, he said when he was on, the, on his trip to Asitra. So he said that at a certain point in the ship, there was a, uh, a storm or whatever. And um, the the sailors, the, the captain, whatever it is, told all the passengers that they have to, it was a storm, they had to pull a, a rope with all their strength. I don't know, it was a rope that held, I don't know, the, the sail or whatever it is that was supposed to go. Supposed to, everybody's supposed to pull with all their strength. So Abena said, I also pulled together with everybody else. And I made as if I'm pulling with all my strength, but I wasn't really pulling with all my strength. He says, that's the way that you're davening. It looks as if you're davening with all your strength, but not really doing with all your strength. It's like a make-believe. So comes the question, so how do I do it? You know, how is it done? You know, just, you got to mean it, you know? So this is the great Chibosh that Rabbeinu is saying. And this is a, something in the Kuda that we keep on touching and hammering on again and again and again. So much is at stake. If you can make a step, you make half a step. If you can make half a step, you make a quarter of a step. If you make, cannot even make a quarter of a step, you make an eighth of a step. If you can't even take any step at all, nothing, nada, zero, you ask a Kaddish to take a step. If you can't even ask a Kaddish you even think it's feeling that you wish, I'll invite it, I would want to ask a Kaddish to take a step. It's all good. But you the Gabi of Tfilo, Gabi of Tfilo, Ben said, you got to fake it till you make it. Get yourself moving. Like, you know, like they're doing in the laughter, as I said before, you know, you go, ha, 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 ha. And before you know it, you, you keep on doing it again, 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 before that you're laughing your head off. The same thing is when people want to get angry. Come to a situation and some people well, they know, you know, they control the situation, they control their families and whatever it is through anger. You know, they get angry, so people around them say, okay, forget about it, this is not worth fighting. So what's the reason? They'll get used to controlling people through anger. To be Rahmanas, but that's the way it is. So what are you gonna do? You're not angry. So they put themselves into, into anger. You know, the, mm, 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 until they get angry. The Venice says the same thing, the same thing is Lugabe Tfila, Lugabe Tfila, the Slavos, in excitement uh, when it comes to davening. One thing is for certain. 
there is great opposition against, you know, that's preventing you from getting really excited about that. It's great opposition. It is through davening that you are actually rectifying whatever it is that you need to rectify in your life. All the the virus that the person did, the very itself becomes a malach, becomes an avenging angel. And that that avenging angel is is when I saw, you know, is above. It exists. Kaddish Baruch feeds it from the kedusha, because the person the person doesn't have the the wherewithal to give a tikkun to that particular malach in order to. So what Kaddish Baruch Hu does? Kaddish Baruch Hu sends this malach as a foreign thought to you while you are done. Once you're there. Now, once a thought comes into your head, that thought is the very that you did. If you allow it to come in, and while you're davening, you're entertaining that thought in your mind, not only that you're not fixing what you did, but you're making it worse. You're making it bigger. You're feeding it. You're not supposed to you know, fight and say like, I don't want you to go away, whatever. The only thing you need to do is simply disregard it and go forward. Now, simply disregarding foreign thoughts is easier said than done. You know, like sometimes a, a person, Hurts somewhere. Well, maybe it was him, right? He banged his hand, whatever it is, hurt, and go, oh, whatever it is. You know the the urge to touch it to make sure that it still hurts. Is does it hurt? Still hurts, it stopped hurting already. It's like oh. to overlook, to overlook a machshav zara, it's like what do you mean? I mean, it's, it's an avayat I did. And so, is it still there? So you turn it back. And I'm not looking at it, but I just want to make sure it's no longer there. No longer there. To look ahead and disregard it takes a great deal of care. This is also the way that you overcome uh, immoral thoughts that come to your head. Immoral thoughts, by and large, come to a person's mind as an escape. You know, life being what it is, you feel anxious, you feel threatened, you feel that whatever it is that you're going to do, is going to fall flat on its face with such a, such a kerplunk. You know, it's going to be a snafu for the history books. And until that happens, you are filled with so much anxiety that you want to take yourself a little vacation from that deep feeling of inadequacy of worthlessness. Immoral thoughts are the uh, international antidepressant. The thing is that they lead into graver depression. Besides the fact that Rabbeinu says that Every immoral thought actually creates a real reality in the world to come. It's, it's, it's not going anywhere. 
you think you just thought it, you know, like when I was a baby, whatever it is that comes to a person's mind, and then you move on, you know, what did they do? I didn't, you know, I didn't do, you did, you have actually created a true, a real reality it was gonna stay there. The way to fight this, as we spoke about the last thing, is just to move on. But you, when you're moving on, it is so unsatisfying. Like, did I deal with it? Did I not deal with it? Did I give it a blow? Did I really win over it? Whatever it is. You feel like you didn't do anything. But that's the only thing you need to do. Just disregard it and move on. Now, as to getting yourself worked up to Daven, this is something that we spoke about a few times before, but it's a good thing to speak about it again and again because I know Afalon need great physical health. That is, there is no way that you are going to work yourself up to davening if you're coming in to daven. There's just no way. You're playing catch up. You have to catch up to where everybody's home. That's what the Gemara says, Hasidim is showing them, the first Hasidim. What they would do is they would come to Daven an hour before Daven. And they would prepare. They would prepare, and then they would have a whole hour. The one says, well, not only this, they would do an hour before davening, then an hour of davening, and then an hour after davening. They would ponder on the field of the daven. That means that nine hours of the day, they were busy with davening. So the Gemara says, so where, where did they learn? When did they learn? Nine hours was dedicated to Daven. But it says, since there were Hasidim, there's a special bracha in the Torah. The Torah would be Mishnah the Torah would keep. You learn a short time and you get a lot. Everything will come in through you know, Ruach HaKodesh, Shafi Eloki, as we learn in Torah HaFamut, right? But there's no way, I mean, even if you come early, even when you come early, it's still not a given that you will be worked up for dominating. But one thing is for sure, unless you come in early and do your mental preparation, there's no way that you'll work yourself up to down. So you come and you think about what it is you're going to do. You come to show 20 minutes, half an hour before davening. And you sit for a few minutes and you think about what it is you're going to do. You're going to be speaking to others about it. And the tefillah includes all the, the all the tikkunim, especially shachris. It includes all the tikkunim, all the moichim, whatever it is, a tremendous thing. And then the thing that you need to do is you have to start saying the tefillah word for word. Say it in a way loudly enough for you to hear it and connect your mind to the words that you're saying from your mind. That's it. That's all you need to do. And in your mind, before you actually start, I'm just, wow, I'm just like, man, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna make this davening, davening to remember, 
today, forget about it. It's going to be the best davening I ever davened in my life. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Man, forget about it. I'm going to tear open the heavens. It's going to be unbelievable. And then you go ahead and you say word for word, word for word, word for word, before you know it. When you're connecting your mind to the words that are coming from your mouth, all your kriches, all the fire which is in it, which is just waiting to get into the davening, it will be channeled into the davening, and you'll find yourself davening with tremendous islahavas without having to put any kriches into it. Because your kriches will already be sucked into the act of governing. So this is the shear that Rabbeinu gave us tonight, Mr. Shabbos, on how to get yourself to do mitzvahs, any mitzvahs, davening for Shmichla, because that's the hardest one, but any kind of mitzvah, to do it with simcha and with sahabas. The answer is, fake it till you make it. Yeah, but that's not real. Come on, I'm suffering. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It's about you being honest. Yes, you are being honest. The other side is doing the same tricks to you before. You know, you know, putting you the the the, the tsar. And by faking it, you're actually taking the simcha out of the tunnel. That's the tool. Because you see, it's always a big faker. There's no sense of the tool to how do you make you? How, how does it, how does the Yetzirah make you the the atzvi? You are a yid that is called the Kodesh Baruch You are shaykh the Kodesh Baruch You are shaykh the mitzvah. You are shaykh the prayer. It doesn't matter what level. It means that you are shaykh to eternity, to everything, to infinity. How can you possibly be the atzmas? People are dealing with money. They should be the atzmas. That's endless. all the all the others in the world are stuck in the money in Taivas money. You're in contact with the Kodesh Baruch on a daily basis all the time. You should be dancing in the streets. So how come you not? Because the big faker fakes you into Atzvus. He hides the fact that this is the name of the game. He says, no, nah, look at you, this, that, whatever it is. So he's faking into Atzvus. So he may love, by you faking Simcha, you are using his tool against them. This is the strategy. That's the tactics. This is how, that's the judo. The jujitsu, the, 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 the kung fu that you use on the Islam. He's He has faked you into lethargy, into depression. Uh, and you fake it into, wow, man, this is just unbelievable. I'm going to dive. I'm going to, I'm going to dive. And I'm going to forget about it. It's going to be unbelievable. Everybody's going to look at me and go, ah, look at him. He's coming out looking like a new King Kong. He's unbelievable. You know, it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be great. And it's going to be great. I don't know if I sent you this, but somebody sent me, somebody sent me a video, a very short video, is that, first of all, it's Misha the Stush. You know, it's, actually, it's not a Misha the Stush. It happens to be something very, very true. But it's funny anyhow. And what he's saying is, you know, when I was young, I was very poor. So now after a lot of hard work and dedication, I'm no longer young. So this <laughs> all of us, Mizat Hashem, should see you all on Monday. I'll get to see you again, Mizat Hashem. We're learning the Simcha of Islahavas, we're davening Simcha Islahavas. It'll be great Simcha, great Simcha.